Hello everyone, this is Code2j. Today I'm going to show you how to write our first Airflow DAG. By watching this video, you can understand how to use the Bash operator, how to build the dependencies of tasks. Sounds exciting? Let's get started. First, let's open our project folder in VS Code. And then we launch the airflow by command docker compose up minus d. After that, we open the link localhost 8080 port in the browser. It might take some seconds, but in the end, we can see the airflow admin login page. After we put the username and password airflow that we created, we can see all the example DAGs. Since we are going to create our own DAG, let's remove all the example DAGs. We go back to the VS Code terminal, type docker compose done minus V. Minus V means that we are not only shutting down the Airflow containers, but also removing the volumes we defined in our Docker Compose YAML file. Then we change the value of Airflow core load examples in the YAML file from true to false. Then we init the Airflow by command Docker Compose up Airflow minus init. After that, we launch Airflow again using docker compose up minus d. After we refresh the page and login, we now see no example DAG is loaded. That's great. Next, we are going to create our first DAG. Now let's go back to VS Code. In Airflow, Airflow DAG is defined as a Python file under the DAGs folder. Therefore, let's create one called our first DAG.py and open it. A DAG implementation is an instantiation of the class DAG. Therefore, we have to firstly import the DAG from Airflow. Then we create an instance of DAG using the with statement. In this case, all the following code will be under the scope of our DAG in this instance. We have to give values to a couple of parameters. Let's type our first DAG as the unique DAG ID and describe our DAG as this is our first Airflow DAG that we write. After that, we have to decide when we want to start our DAG and how often we want to execute it. Let's first import data time from data time package. Let's say we want to start our DAG from the 30th of July and run it every day at 2 a.m. We basically set the parameter start date equal data time 2021 July 30 and 2 and scheduler interval equal at daily. Apart from that, we would also like to define the common parameters which will be used to initialize the operator in default odds. For example, we want to set the owner of the DAG as code2j, the maximum time of retrials is 5, and retry delay will be 5 minutes. For retry delay, we need to import the time data from the data time package and set the 2 minutes as the wait time for every retry. Then we set the DAG's default acts equals to our defined default ox dictionary variable. 
Next, let's create a simple task for our DAG. We will use bash operator to execute some bash commands. Therefore, we have to import bash operator first. A task is an implementation of an operator. So let's create a very simple task, print out a message, hello world, this is the first task. Let's type task1 equals bash operator. We first have to set the task ID equals first underscore task. Then we set the bash command equals echo hello world. This is the first task. Let's go back to our browser and refresh. Oops, we found errors in our code. Let's click it and see the details. It says that there's no module named airflow.operator. Let's go back to VS Code and change operator to operators. Refresh again, the error message is not the same, which means we fixed the bash operator import error. The new message says that minute is the invalid argument for time data. I think it should be minutes, not minute. Let's try and refresh. Now, the time data error is fixed, but we got another error with an unexpected keyword argument, scheduler underscore interval. Let's fix this by change the argument to schedule underscore interval and refresh. Boom, we have no errors and finally see our first deck shows up. We can see there's only one task named first underscore task in the tree view. Let's turn on our first DAG. We can see that our first DAG will be executed from the start date July 30th midnight all the way up to yesterday midnight. If we select one of the successful task runs and open the execution log, we can see the hello world this is the first task message has been printed out. In general, an ETL process consists of multiple tasks. Let's create our second task, which will be executed after the success of task one. After the definition code of task one, we type task two equals to bash operator we put second underscore task as the task ID and the simple bash command says, I'm the second task and I will be running after the task one. Now that we have defined task two, let's build the task dependency. To achieve this, we can set task two as the downstream of task one or task one as the upstream as task two. In order to not mess up the version of DAG, let's change the DAG ID to our first DAG version two. Let's go back to the browser and refresh. You can see there are two DAGs now, our first DAG and our first DAG version two. From the graph view, we can see task two is after task one which is exactly what we wanted. Let's start the DAG. Once it is complete, we can see task two will be run only after the success of task one. Let's check the execution log. The log shows that the execution date time of task two is later than of task one. What if we want to have three tasks and task two and three will be run once task one finishes? Let's go back to VS Code and add task three and build the dependencies. 
we will create our third task with bash command echo hey i'm the task three and i will be running after task one at the same time as task two there are many ways we can build the task dependency let's try our first method basically add the task three as the downstream of task one we change the tag version refresh the page and see that task 1 is followed by tasks 2 and 3 in the graph view. Let's start the DAG and all the tasks will be executed follows the dependencies. Let's check the execution log of task 3. The message has been successfully printed out and the execution date time of task 3 and 2 is later than that of task one. Let's go back VS Code and try the second method with the bit shift operator. Task 1 write shift to task 2 and task 1 write shift to task 3, which means task 2 and 3 are the downstream tasks of task 1. Let's change the DAG ID version and refresh the page again, we can confirm the correct task dependencies in the graph view. Let's go back one more time and introduce our third method, which is the adjusted version of the second method. We can convert the two line bit shift operator into one. With task one, right shift square bracket with task 2, comma, task 3 inside of it. Go back to the browser and refresh. We can confirm the task dependencies are correctly configured. That's it. You have learned how to create our first Airflow DAG. You can basically create any kind of Airflow DAG you want with the same method. I hope you enjoy this video. If you do, Please subscribe and click the like button. If you have any questions, feel free to write in the comment section. And last but not least, which Airflow topics do you want to see in the next video? Please share it in the comment section. I will talk to you in the next one. Bye bye.